Hey y'all, how's it going? It's Thursday night and I'm back. I'm back to teach a little bit of a, this is going to be a fun little guy tonight. It's not going to take a lot of time, but it's a quick way to show you how that you can use acrylic paints to get a watercolor effect. And then we're going to throw a little doodle on top to kind of do something a little different. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get right back to it. Okay, here we go. So uh, for those that are just joining in or that might join later, my name is Kim Hostetter and I'm Crafting with Kim and I am live streaming from Facebook and YouTube. Oh, I just realized I got my main phone and nothing there. I might have to move that, but it's all right. I hope I'm bother you too much. Um, yeah, anyway, so we are, or we am, I am live streaming, and I hope that I can get some people to come on tonight and give me some comments and show me some love, and let's hang out together. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and hop right into this, and uh, you can ask me some questions as we go along, And uh, but I would like if you're on YouTube, if you would come to my channel and give me some subscribes and some notifications and let me know I do this every week some sort of little tutorial, crafting tutorial, painting tutorial, and on Facebook, send me some shares, uh, sprinkle it around, give me some comments, you know, let me know what you think, and um, I, I love to hear from you guys, so let's let's get going, all right, so you can see here, I've got um, a camera set up here, which I'm getting a little fancy, <laughs> first time I've used two cameras, but so you can see I've got a couple little canvases here, these are very small, these are five by sevens okay and um it's kind of like i said it's sort of like the background is a watercolor effect and then i'm going to use a couple various some of it's going to be freehand and some of it's going to be with stencils i'm using stencils just for the sake of showing you how you can actually utilize stencils to get a doodle kind of effect because most people just pounce it with the paint and that's that but this is a little different technique that you can use. All right, so instead of doing two exact ones like this, I thought what I would do is go ahead and do two more smaller ones. So these will actually like coordinate. Once I get them done, you can kind of put it in the center, set it up like that, put it all together on your wall or wherever you want to put it. Okay, you kind of see that? Yeah. So, like I said, I'm going to be kind of making these along the same lines as these so they all coordinate. Now, tonight, what I'm going to be working with are, um, I have acrylic paints, which you can see some of my acrylics here. I have quite a few of them. This, um, you know, usually I like to use the Deco Arts because they're very good quality um, as far as doing craft painting and acrylic painting. But in this case, I'm going to be watering these down quite a bit, so you can use pretty much you know, any of the real cheapy acrylics and you'll get this, a similar effect for this one. Um, also, I do have a few stencils over here. So, you know, various types of stencils that I'm going to just be playing with. And this is very freeform. Um, I'm just kind of winging it in a sense. I don't have any real plan on this except for the, my coloring. And as I go along, I'm just going to do it. And that's what's kind of kind of cool about this particular um, project is that you can just literally make it your own. Um, and as we go along, I'll get into my artifacts about doodling and a little bit about Zentangle and how that all came to be. So you can have a little something to, to know along with the fact that you're learning this. I teach you a little bit about the subject that I'm working on tonight, which, like I said, tonight is doodling. So we're going to talk a little bit about doodling in a sense. It's kind of doodling. So, okay, let's get going. So first off, what I've got here is... Um, you got my water, of course. You know, it's a little bit milky, but it's mainly white because I've been off a brush earlier. I'm going to throw some paints on my little my little palette here. I call it my palette. Um, the one thing about this, though, is when you're working with these paints, it only, it's only going to take a little bit. I mean, just a little squirt for whatever you're doing. And I'm just kind of going to wing it. But, and like I said, what I'm doing is I'm adding a lot of water to it. So it's going to be a watered down version of um, of doing like a paint, but it does give that sort of a, a 
uh, kind of a water color kind of effect. Okay, let's see. The one thing though is what you don't want to do is you don't want to like mix your colors together too much because they'll start getting a little bit muddy. And muddy means that they'll just start turning into a big mess and it won't look good. And you'll kind of see that as I go along. So I'm just taking a little bit of brown. I've got some um, kind of an aqua, Bahama Mama. Um, I'm not going to put any black on there because I have black on top. Oh, this is a real pretty Azarian Crimson. I'm going to use a little bit of that, kind of a burgundy red color. And uh, it's a, it really goes a long way. It really, really does. All right, so let me start with this one here. I got my brush really super wet. I mean, I'm just dipping in there. I'm going to go ahead and start, I think, with this kind of a coral color. All right, you see what I'm doing here? Let's move it over. Literally, this is like very, very light brush. Let me get that down a little bit more. I mean, it's just like water, just very, very watery. And not even really like, well, I can kind of dip my brush a little bit. You don't clean it a lot. Okay, then I'm just going to take another color, maybe like a little bit of the kind of a yellow. This is almost like a um, mustard yellow ochre. And you see, I'm just kind of blending that on there too. It's super, super wet. And that's what I want. You guys just want to, and as it dries, um, you can go back and add more if you want to add a little bit extra on top, but you just want that real wet feel to it. You can sort of blend it in too. You can blend your colors a little bit, but like I said, just be careful if you're doing some darker colors than the other colors, but like your browns and stuff, because they'll start looking kind of muddy. I'm going to add a little touch of brown right now. But this is, like I said, really cool. You can do so many color combinations with this and really make it look kind of neat. And I kind of want to keep a little bit of a white in there, too, on the ends. I don't want to cover the whole thing up. Of course, that's just kind of the look I'm going for. All right. And it's been a little bit of that aqua in there. You know, I don't think there's been, um, if you're into art, you watch things online like I do all the time, but you know that paint pouring is a real big thing right now, and I think it's so cool. I have yet to try that. Has anybody out there tried that uh, yet for paint pouring? Because I think it's really kind of a cool idea, but I'm always <laughs> too cheap to waste my paint. Okay, so you can see already I've got a really soft kind of fun watery color kind of texture to it. I actually took a little bit more. I wanted to take a little bit more. Now here, like if you want to take a little bit off and get another effect, you can take a paper towel and simply just kind of like, it gives a really fun effect here. And just kind of dab a little bit and see. Let me see if I can get the camera there so you can see it. Okay. That's not showing up too well in the camera, but believe me, it's kind of a cool effect. It, it kind of gives it a kind of a, a crinkly look to it. It gives it a little bit more texture. And I didn't do that on the last one, but I did it on this one. Yeah, I can set it. Maybe look a little bit better when I see it in person, but on the camera right now, it doesn't look too good. Anyway, so that's kind of cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'll set this one aside and I'll go ahead and work on the other one. So I've got a couple people I got. Who's, who's out there? We got, oh, hey, Susan. Hey, girlfriend. How's it going? You feeling better? Glad to see you on here. Okay, so I'm going with this one now. Once again, I'm just kind of, oh, I didn't put any of the, uh, that, uh, seeing that beautiful, that, Alzarian, it's kind of like a burgundy tone. And this is so simple. I mean, really, it's just a matter of just blending it in. You can notice that I'm using the side of my brush too. And I'm just kind of getting little swirls and that type of thing. So let me see. I need to add a little orange in there too, because the orange kind of ties them all in together, it seems. Okay. Throw a little bit of that in there. The other one had a more of an orange orange. I'm throw a little bit of that orange orange in there. Nobody's giving me no comments yet. That's just me and Susan. Susan, how's it going, darling? How's it going? Okay. All right. So see, I can just kind of add a little bit in there. Blend it in. I think it's just a, such a cool effect. Very, very watercolor. Very abstract. Abstract, yeah. That's, that's what you call it. And it's really neat, okay? The colors are just blended really pretty. And what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to paint um, black edges around, but I'll probably just do that on my own. And you can see that 
I've already done that with these. That way they'll all tie on on the end. Another thing I did at the end of this one too is I put, these looked a little bit dull because the waters were washed out, the colors were washed out. So I took a little clear acrylic spray and just put a little spray coat on there and made them a little glossy, kind of jazzed them up a bit. Okay. Ooh, that one's spreading really nicely. I like that one a lot. And a little bit of um, brown in there too. A little touch of brown. Kind of give it a little brown and the darker colors. Give it a little bit more dimension, I think. Yeah, okay. And let's see. Where's my paper towel? I'm going to go back and buff it a little bit with paper towel. Not too much, though. I actually like the way this one turned out. This one turned out pretty darn cool. But see, you can take a little bit off of that paper towel. It gives it a really pretty effect. Okay. I think I'm going to call that good for now, at least for now. Let me go ahead and I'm going to put the blow dryer on and uh, dry these puppies up, and then we'll see how we're doing from there. Sorry about the noise, guys. Actually, you can kind of push it around this way, too. Give it a flow look. <laughs> Almost dry, guys. Almost there. Okay. Those are drying up pretty quickly. So there's a couple little wet spots. And while those are finishing up, I'll go ahead and uh, get into what I call my artifacts. And basically what that is, is, as I mentioned before, is every time I go live and I teach a, an online class or even an in-person class, I like to talk a little bit about the subject matter that I'm working with. And in this case, uh, I'm working with, we're doing like a doodle effect. So I looked up, hey, what's doodling all about? I mean, where'd the word come from? It's kind of interesting. A couple of the things. I always learn something really cool whenever I do this. So um, let me see. What's one of my first, first facts here? I've got my little cheat sheet notes. Uh, nowadays, a lot of times they call uh, doodling Zentangle. It's got a new word. I didn't really look up too much about like the how that all started. Something tells me it might be Asian because of the Zen, but um, pretty much it's it's a form of doodling. But basically, it's an abstract art form that is drawing but repetitive patterns. So you know, it's like doodling, same thing. You just lines and circles. I mean, a lot of people have seen the Zen tangled kind of look to that you know it's usually black and white but you can color them in as well um secondly um as far as doodling goes i got cheat sheet notes so i'm looking down a little bit here doodling is basically a word that's that means drawing is made while a person's attention is otherwise occupied and i can definitely attest to that because most people you know and myself i was a big doodler when I was in school, you know, you'd sit there in your notebook, if you're listening in class or not necessarily listening, you would uh, doodle, you know, just have all kinds of, and I, my notebooks were always marked up like that because I was always doodling. So anyway, that's a couple of facts. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you a few more in a minute. I want to go ahead and start. Um, I don't know. I'm just wondering if I should add a little bit more color on there or not. It's not too bad the way they are. And I think maybe once I get the spray adhesive, because the clear spray actually pops the colors a little bit more. It makes them stand out. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave them like that. I mean, I could add a little bit darker tone on there, but I, I kind of like them where they are. All right, so we're just going to go with that. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm working with markers, just a basic Sharpie. I've got a, um, I guess they call this a, fine point, you know, just your regular point there that most people know. Then I've got what an ultra fine here, a really, really, really skinny tip, which I'll do a little bit with that. Um, I have a couple of these Sharpies in case they start going out on me. And then I have me a white paint pen. 
This one's a Sharpie brand. They make lots of different um, kinds of them. And the white pink pen, of course, you can see here on this one, I used white. You know, I am black and white and everything like that to add a little something extra. So I'm just kind of playing around to see what kind of effect I like best. And they're both kind of cool. The white gives a little extra bump on. Okay. And like I said, I've got some stencils here. Now I'm going to do part stencil and part just drooling on my own and uh, kind of see what we come up with. All right. So let's see. Of course, I do want them to look somewhat similar because they are kind of coordinating in a sense. So even though they're going to be different, they're kind of alike. You know, similar colors, uh, similar idea with the, with the doodle or, um, or uh, doodle stencing, what that does. You know. So I guess, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. And what I want to do here, like I said, I haven't even really thought this out much at all, the table here. I think I'm just going to go ahead and try this one here. Like I said, for people who feel like they don't have much of an imagination or they're a little bit nervous about just going freehand, this is where, you know, using a stencil is a good way to, you know, to practice. And you can actually practice on paper or something like that first. I'm doing, I'm not going to do it straight in the center. I'm going to do a little off center. And basically, I'm just outlining the stencil. This one I've never actually worked with like this before. So we'll see how it all turns out. Usually they turn out pretty cool though. You just want to hold it down real good so it doesn't shift on me. How's that looking? I guess that looks pretty good. Okay. Petals. This marker might be a little bit fat for this, but I'll make it work. It'll still be all right. Yeah, this is a kind of a tight spot to get in here and do all this, but I think it'll still look pretty cool when it's a Take it, off, take it off. So how's everybody doing tonight? It's a uh, Thursday night, getting close to 4th of July weekend. Everybody planned up for that? Anything, anything exciting going on? Okay, let's see how that works. I'll check that out. Isn't that cool? All right, see? Just using a simple stencil and a marquee, what you can do with that. It's kind of neat. All right, so I got that one. And... I don't know, this little guy here just looks kind of cool to me. I sort of wanted to do this along the edge. Let's see how this is. I'm not going to do all of it. I think I'll just do part of it, but we'll kind of see how this turns out. If I can get the marker in there, I think I can. Yeah, so I am I love doodling. I like doodling because it's something that you can, it's kind of mindless, and, and actually that's that's where the whole name of it came from is, is um, the name of course, like I said, is when people are just thinking, they're not really using their brain much. They're just kind of like um, in la-la land, so to speak, and they're just letting their letting their pen or whatever they're using just kind of go to town. And therefore, you know what? It becomes very relaxing. It's actually very relaxing because you're just kind of hanging out, doing a little doodle here. That's why we call it definitely art therapy. So there we go. You can see this too. Oh, my camera keeps stopping. I'm using my camera. My phone camera is a second camera and it glitches out on me sometimes. But see, you got a little design on the side right there. Looking kind of cool so far. All right, what else can I do here? Mm, let me just do a little bit on my own too. I like to throw a little stuff in here. Okay, this is where you can just start winging it. Coming up with some cool patterns and designs and stuff. I've always been like a pattern person. Anybody out there like to doodle? Like to hang out and just let their mind wander? Let's see. This is always like trying to think what to put in there. And especially I'm using a permanent marker here. So <laughs> I want to make sure. I, I don't have a do-over on this one. And especially when you're not thinking about it. It's not a pencil or a pen. Let's see how this goes here. Okay. That's looking kind of cool. I'm going to just add that to a lot over there on the side. All right. Let me tell you something else about doodling. Okay. So um, it's basically abstract lines. I mean, you can see here I'm actually using the stencil, so they're not necessarily abstract. But it's all coming together as an abstract. 
in the sense of way that you know the the designs on the canvas. Um, that it's abstract lines that are often associated with kids actually because kids' hand and eye coordination are not developed yet, so it's very simple drawings, which leads to the name that it was first associated with. Let's see where's that at. I'm trying to move a word over here. The word doodle, check this out, this comes to the word doodle arrived uh, derived from the 17th century to mean fool or simpleton. It is the origin of the 18th century verb to swindle or make a fool of. Huh, that's kind of interesting. The modern term for, uh, oh, I'm going to tell you that a little bit later because that's got a play. But yeah, and, and oh, no, 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 that was part of the interview. Yeah, okay. So they, I'm going to tell you this because it's actually kind of funny. Okay, so the modern term for um, doodle, besides drawing, I don't know how modern it is when it came about, but it was a term used for a politician. <laughs> That's an office that does nothing at the expense of the constituents. So I was like, okay, all right. Um, comments, comments. Nobody's giving me any comments tonight. Come on, somebody say something. As soon as I see you still there, I guess you're the only one there. Oh, I see nobody's actually watching right now. Okay, well, maybe you'll catch it later. Anyway, I thought that um, politician comment was hysterical. I'm like, you're a doodle. <laughs> How about a doodle head, new head? Okay. So anyway, let me continue on. Let's see what else I got here. Let me get my other one and get some ideas. Oh, I know what I always like to do. I love to do these. The little spirals. Big on spirals. Spirals are just the coolest thing ever. Coolest thing since spilt milk. Or not spilt milk. Um, it's not spilt milk. Spilt milk's not cool. Can what's the same thing? The coolest thing since sliced bread. There you go. Sliced bread. You definitely see I'm just winging this a little bit. Um, what else can I do? Maybe I'll throw a little bit of a stencil somewhere on here with this one. Oh, we got. Oh, here's a heart pattern in the center. But that might be too much. Yeah, it might be. No, no, no. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just do this guy right here. See how this turns out. Yeah, so like I said, this is a very, very simple, easy little guy. And you can do some really cool ideas with it. Think about it. If you um, got some neat colors, you could do this on a large canvas too, if you wanted to. Um, you know, take a stencil and actually just use the entire stencil and mark it, mark it, a marker and turn it into a, something really, really awesome. Let's see. Oh, yes. So some of it is repeated patterns. Uh-oh. That one got colored in. So this is a color that one in. I'll color them all in. Anybody there joining me yet? Nope. Nobody's doing me love tonight. No love tonight. Oh, well. That's a shame. Oh, wait. I need to do it. Okay. So, yeah, you can see how it's kind of coming along. Okay. There you go. All right, I might add a few more, maybe like a little zigzag or something here. Um, keeping most of these lines along the curves, you can see it's mainly all curves. Simply because that's kind of what I started going with. All right. And so I'll throw something like that in there. All right, I think I'm going to call that one good. I don't want to overdo it and get too much on there and start looking too junky. That one, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this one real quick. And this one I'm going to try throughout with a bigger stencil here. I think I'll do something. I don't want to do the whole thing. Maybe I'll do like half of it. Half of this guy here, make it look kind of off the page sort of thing. So, yeah. If you guys can hear the music, okay, and it's not too loud, 
trying to get my balance going on with this music. Because I like having the music. I say this pretty much every time I'm on here. Because the music just helps. I think it really helps with the vibe of the creativity when you got your music going. So, got this cool duty free music. And that duty free, but royalty free music called Stream Beats. I like to play now in the background. Pretty darn cool. I don't know if it's as cool as what I'm doing right now on this canvas, though. This is pretty darn cool, too, now. Let me tell you. All right. Let's see what I got here. All right. That's a little different, but it's all right. I don't mind it. This one I'll probably do a little bit of a white on for sure. Okay, anything else I can add up on this guy? I don't think so. I think I'm going to put another little flower on this one. I think I'll just do a big flower, and then that way I can just um, color it in any way I want to, or draw it in any way I want to. Okay, all right, so here we go. So I've been really spending a lot of time <clears throat> online watching a lot of other artists paint and draw and do all kinds of fun creative things and uh it's really neat. you know it's really nice to be able to see all the different stuff that people are doing out there all right so i think i'm just going to go around with this again so I'm just kind of like free forming it, guys. Free forming it here. Okay. See how this is coming along? I'm going to get the camera a little closer. Move it down a little bit more. Is that probably a little bit better, I think? Yeah, probably. Okay. All right, so I've got that, and then now what else can I throw up on there? What else can I throw up on there? Let's see. I'm going to do another, like, circle thing over here, I think. Oh, I know what I want to do. I'm going to do one of these guys. It's just basically like a circle. The lines going out. And then in a minute, after I get my basics down with this marker, I'm going to switch with my other smaller markers and the white one and do some interesting things on there with that one. So, yeah, this is, like I said, this was not thought out, pre-planned or anything. Not really. I mean, except for the colors and, and all that. Let me go ahead and throw a big line in here somewhere. Okay. And what else can I do? I don't see something. The other one, I put a little B stencil. I don't know what that B is. I had them over here. But I might use that again because that's kind of neat. But I don't hear this. No, that's a small one. That's a different one. But you know what? That's good. That's good that it's a different one. I'm going to put this one right up here. I've got like this little insect. I guess it's a B. I'm going to put them right up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so much of them will actually come in doing this. So you guys, I absolutely love coming online, sharing all my little tricks and things that I know, things that I learn from other people and things that I get off Pinterest. It would be nice if I had other people on here to hang out with me though and do stuff. And, really enjoy it a little bit more but i'm going to go ahead and put a body on this guy because it looks kind of funky that way that looks a little bit better yay we got a little bb 
a little bit of fine insect. Cool, cool. All right, I need a little something in the center. What can I do that way? Um, you can like put a little bump bump on here. Anybody joining me yet? Oh, I'm still alone. All alone by the telephone. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. <laughs> I guess I'll just enjoy it on my own. Just enjoy it on my own. Well, if anybody actually does watch the replay, I will say this again. I'm Kim Hotstetter, Crafting with Kim. But of course, I guess you would probably know that if you see me on my YouTube channel or my Facebook. Because I am streaming live right now. And you'll be able to watch it on either one. And I would appreciate so much if you would share this with some other folks. Help me get this round. Um, join me, give me some comments, give me a thumbs up, tell me you don't like me or whatever. At least say something. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. All right. Dots. Dots are the coolest thing ever. Dots, dots, dots. Finish them off like that. Okay, I think now I'm going to try working some of the white in. Um, and then I can always add to this a little bit if I want to add a little something that's going on. Okay. Okay. Even though I say there's not really a rhyme or reason to this, there sort of is. Because you do have to consider your balance. Um, and the co the composition, the full composition of what you're doing. I mean, if you just put everything anywhere, it, it wouldn't look quite right. So there, and so what I do is I sort of look at, you know, I've got a lot of obviously I said got a lot of curves going on. I'm not using too many straight lines on this one, um, but you can um, use that, and like I said, use that with some straight, some curve make it balanced so i've got something big over here i've got something a little smaller over here you know kind of proportionate so it looks correct on your palette on your canvas all right let's see how this paint pen works i just got this up in the day and i haven't used it so hopefully it won't blob out on the too much if you're using a paint pen for the first time it's got this tip that actually um it pushes in and that's what you have to do to get the uh the ink to come out Okay, so you go ahead and, and you just push that in right there until it comes out, and then you just draw until it starts drying out, and then you use it again. You just push it down for a little quick second, and then you can use it again. Okay, so let me see. What do I want to throw some? You know what? I'm going to do this first. I think. I'm going to do a little bit of a. First, I want to use this very, very thin. This one's super, super skinny. I was going to put some little ends on this thing too. Yeah, the last few weeks I've been doing like subject paintings. And, you know, I like subject paintings, don't get me wrong. You know, like I think the last one I did was a surfboard. And, um, I've been co painting, which I'll be doing next week with my online friend, Anita. Um, but this is nice, you know, this is kind of a neat, something really different. I've always been attracted to abstracts, believe it or not. And even though it wouldn't show in the work, um, I, I've, I've done a lot of patterns and stuff in the past. And so that's why I really enjoy this kind of look and feel. I don't know if there's too many people out there that are really into the abstract idea. Oh, I know what I was going to show. It's funny. I was thinking... I was going to show you something earlier tonight. Nobody's here to see it, but I have a really cool doodle that I did with a sunflower that um, it would be really great to make it into an art kit because you could really do a lot with it. 
Okay, so see now I added the uh, a little fine line marker on there and it gives it a really unique look to it. It adds a little bit of extra something. Okay, and this one, I kind of like scribble a little bit too to give it an effect. And I literally want it to be a simpleton, <laughs> simpleton scribble. It gives it a little bit more of an abstract sort of thing. I should probably do more of these really. They are kind of cool, honestly. They're really, really cool. So I'm going to put a big circle right there, I think. Okay. Now, I am going to start working with my white marker. I said, usually, like I said, when I paint, I'm copying something. I'm using my own imagination on it, too, and using making it mine. But I'm kind of copying somebody else's work. When I'm doing this, this is my, you know, this is basically my design type things, and I'm making up. So it's more of an original. Hey, somebody's up there. I got a heart from somebody. You gave me a heart. Oh, Francesca. Hey, darling. You better get over that cold soon. So we can uh, have lunch together. So I know you just uh, kind of tuned in, time to look up and see you. But I'm doing these little kind of like it's a combination of a watercolor effect with stenciling, doodling, zentangle. I don't even know what really, that's why I just call it paint doodle because it's something I kind of came up with where you can use. Your own, you know, I'm using my own stencils, uh, some of the stencils, like I used a little bit of stencils here. You can go back and see the replay if you want. But then I'm also freehanding, just doing some simple doodle designs and um, coming up with something kind of cool. And so, yeah, and I'd already made these two before. So these are like little five by sevens. I got these from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do the little, was it the little three by fives or whatever. And I'm adding to them so I can kind of make a little bit of a, you know, just a composite piece that you could actually put up. If you want to put them all together and hang them up. Which I might do and try to put them up as a set. I'll, I'll definitely hang them on my wall, but I don't have any space on my wall anymore. Oh, it is fun. And you know what the thing about it is, Francesca, even though you're not feeling good, this is something you can do. You know why? Because... As I was just saying, it's very, um, it's very much your own. It's very free-forming. I know you missed what I was talking about because I, I go through and do my artifacts. And I was talking about that the word doodle originally meant like simpleton <laughs> because it's, it's something that's just really not, you know, my, it's not mindful. It's just really easy and fun and like, you know, with you. And it actually is very relaxing too. So it'd be a good way for you to just to kind of chill out and do something creative even though you're not feeling too great. I wonder if Susan's on here. I think Susan, Susan was my other friend that's been sick for a while. I think she's starting to get better. And her little grandson's been in the hospital and she's had all kinds of crazy stuff going on. So, yeah. so now what I'm doing is I just used a Sharpie and I'm going over it with a pink pen, a white pink pen. You see, like on the, oh, the first two I did, this one actually has white in it. And then I did one that has no white, just to kind of get a different idea. But I kind of like, you know, a little bit of both. So I'm going to just add a little touch of white on probably both of them, to tell you the truth, because I like the white. All right, so let's see. What can I do here? I think I'll throw a little line in here. And like I said, Francesca, if you want to go back and see the replay, you can see how I did the background. Because pretty much I did like a really soft color wash with the acrylics to give it a, um, a watercolor, a real soft watercolor effect. And I really love that, love doing that. I was just saying that I think I need to do more of these because they're really fun. And it's something that I can use my own imagination on instead of copying somebody else's thing on Now, the one thing about them, too, is you don't want to get them too junky. You know, you want to keep them so that they they look abstract, but they're not too overdone. And, you know, you can try to start doing too much to them and they get a little out of control. So you got to be 
you gotta look up from your work every once in a while and kind of say, okay, is that too much? Is that not enough? Or what can I add to it? Okay, make it a little bit more. So, you know, the difference between doodling, I guess, and zentangling is they're sort of the same. Um, yeah, I'll definitely we watch it. Like I said, I'll just get some little canvases and just put a little soft color of paint on there and just doodle away. Um, or like I said, you know, I took, this was a, this is like a tile stencil I've used in the past, but on this one, I literally just put it like right on the side and I just gave it a little interest and just instead of painting with the stencil, you're just drawing it in. So same kind of idea. So stencils can do more than just use, you know, for painting, you can use them for drawing too. I got a brand new paint pen here. I've used up my white paint pen. I use my white paint pen a lot. I think my black one's about gone too. I have a whole set with all these different colors, and the two main colors I use are white and black. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to color this little guy in white, and then I'm going to go to my next one here. Sometimes, too, with these paint pens, you might have to go over it once or twice to get the color to be dark enough. If you want, and then you can go back over it again with your. All right, so that's that one for now. Now, um, I'm trying my. I'm using a second camera. You can see tonight. I'm working. My table space is using my cell phone. I figured out how to hack that, and so um, it seems to have a little bit of a delay on here sometimes when I'm using. Okay. What's I was watching a gal who was on the uh, paint party headquarters the other night. I honestly, I think I forget her name, but she was doing zentangling and it, like a hundred zentangles. I think I posted that on our little private group, Francesca. And it was pretty cool, man. Everybody was very supportive of her and they were getting on there and giving her all these. Uh, she was trying to get to a hundred, hundred views. And I think she ended up getting it. It was late though. I got tired and I got off, but, um, the replay on the next day, I think she did make it to 100. She's giving away all these prizes. It was really, really cool. I'm like, man, I like, I don't know. I guess you just got to keep putting yourself out there, everybody, and, and get the love shared. People get on and see ya. But uh, it was pretty neat. Okay, I'm going to add a little white up top here just to balance it out. And then I'm going to call it good on the white on this one. I'm going to pretty much leave this one. Um... Let me see, what do I do? I think I'll just go in here. So you can see this is very simple. Well, we got some dots and dashes and some curves. Not much to it, guys. But I thought this would be really kind of cool, too, if you were to use other, say you were using some really cool muted colors like grays and browns and, and um, you know, some really soft earth tones. You do a really cool thing with it that way, too. Okay, so I've got, I, I, I'm telling you, I feel like I want to do, <laughs> I want to do this right here. Let's see, I want to put some light in this one. This one's definitely got more light in it than the other one does. Okay, all right. I forgot that I have this extra camera. I'm probably see the top of my hair. <laughs> got all my gray hair coming. All right. Actually, I'm just trying to end up coloring that in. I need some. There we go. Now we got some color going. I needed to get some paint and the tip can. Hello. There we go. That's it. I'm definitely going to look away. Okay. So these are my basic two. I am going to add a little bit. I like to use the little fine marker to just add a little extra scribble to it for just a little um interest make sure i get paint all over so i just you know kind of this is of course to, everything's totally optional on here i just sort of like this look to give it like a little scribble look like Da, 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 da. 
So Francesca, are you still there? Are you? I know you, earlier you said you still weren't feeling too good. <laughs> not not fun being sick. I've had so many people sick lately, and I don't know what the deal is with that. Where it's all coming from, and it's all different stuff too. Not everybody's got the same thing, and no, it's not COVID. They're just got cold, head colds, whatever it is. I don't know. I haven't gotten anything in a long time. Thank you, Lord. Um, oh, you are there. Okay, good. I'm being pretty low key. I'm just not really. I know, I know. No, it's not. I know. Everybody, first thing these days you get sick. Like, oh, God. No, no, no. We know it's not. I know. Um, let me see. Let me throw a little bit up here. Scribble. Yeah, that kind of jesses it up a little bit. You can see that. Okay. I'm trying to make it so you can see the camera. Like I said, using my phone camera and the two cameras, so your stream yard makes it a little bit more awkward. There we go. There, okay. I was going to see. I'm still trying to figure it out. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay. But see, these are actually very quick. Um, I think it would be really kind of cool to do it on a very large canvas myself and do some really fun stuff and very big images and make it like you could do a dang mural this way if you wanted to. So um, I think I'm pretty much going to, I mean, I might play with it a little bit more as I'm looking at it. <laughs> I'm like, I still know something else I could do. Because it starts getting addictive. When you do it, you kind of like it because it's super relaxing. You know, listen to a little music, you can watch a little TV and just sit there. Just like you would doodle in your notebook and you're in school or something like that. I said uh, one of on the on the um, artifacts about doodling. It said abstract lines often associated with kids. Like I, hand to eye, I said that early. It said people do it like during lectures and in schools and your notebook margins and uh, long telephone conversations. I can remember doodling for all of those honestly because I just love to doodle. Yeah, a journal cover. That's a great idea. Yeah, you know what? I have never really, I love the journals. I just don't really have one for myself. I never really made one for myself. And, and I love the fact that people do them and they're so cool. But I don't journal that much. I need to. I had an art coach for a while up in North Carolina and she was uh, teaching. She was real big on journaling. And she had me journaling for a while. Basically, it wasn't, it was just more like, um, I write a little bit, but most of it was about um, drawing, you know, just some sort of drawing, just do some sort of drawing or something every day in my book, my sketchbook, and kind of get me in the idea of just every day doing art. And it was, it was kind of neat. It was definitely something to uh, a discipline, you know what I mean? Okay. All right, Kim, I'm going to stop soon. <laughs> I swear I'm going to stop soon. These look really dang cool. Honestly, I love these. I really do. I think I'm going to do more of these. I'm going to make this like my own little personal style. What do you think? Yeah, I like them. Okay. Uh, appointment books, six coasters. Yeah, like I said, you can really go. Whenever I, I teach anything, I like to show, you know, techniques so that people can hopefully expand and use it for something else, not just for what you see here. You know, you can actually take it and make it like you said into coasters or whatever. You know, use your imagination. And, and, and of course, things like this make great gifts, guys. You know, you can, if you like the whole, I mean, this is more definitely abstract. But think about it. If you're, say, you're into like farmhouse look or that, you know, that real rustic kind of thing, you could take your farmhouse colors on here, your grays, your browns, and a little touch of, you know, your turquoise blue, whatever it is. And do that for your background and then you could take like a stencil image of a chicken or whatever and do your chicken on top of there and then make a little lettering writing you know it's just another it's just another technique that you can use in a lot of ways and it's a way that you can kind of really um make it your own it's not something that you're copying you know because you're kind of using your own imagination it's really easy to do too so you know 
So anyway, yeah, like I said, all I have to do now, which I won't do at this point, I'll, I, you know, but I'm just going to, I'll take a, my black paint and I'll go around the edges here and uh, edge the black like I did on these. Okay, makes it stand out. But let's see how these look together. If they look good enough or they look way too busy to be able to put, if you would imagine these on, excuse my, I've got such a messy paint table here. I've got a piece of, tile, what you call it? brown paper down on here. I think they would look really cool kind of together as far as you put them up on a wall. They'll look pretty awesome. Especially when you get the black painted around the edges. Now here's another thought. I if a person wanted to um, assemble them, you could you could literally hang them up on the wall like this. Or I thought of another way you could put them together is like this. You could actually and you, what the way that I would do it is I would probably uh, initially, you know, get them set up the way you want them. Hot glue the sides here, hot glue these sides in, and then just um, that would kind of hold a little bit, but still be a little shaky. But once you get the hot glue on, you could flip it over on the back. And I'm noticing too, these are from the Dollar Tree, so the wood is not, it's a, they're a little crooked, but yeah, they still work. I mean, for a block. So you can turn them over like this once you hot glue them. And then you could probably take like uh, some sort of a little clamp. I don't exactly know what kind of clamp. Or, you know, maybe pre-drill some holes and put a little screw in there something how, somehow like that. And you could actually have them all assembled in one piece. You know, make a really cool gift, right? I think so. All right. Okie dokie. Um, I am actually done. Does anybody have any more questions? I know, Francesca, you're the only one on right now. So, um but I'm glad that you tuned in. And like I said, hopefully somebody catch it on the replay. And you can give me some, you can give me uh, comments and, um, and likes and all that good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Spread the word because I do this every week, at least usually Tuesdays. Tuesday was kind of an off day for me. Uh, so I did it tonight. Um, and I actually have a Zoom class tomorrow. I'm teaching. Uh, Viva Margarita, big old huge martini glass, not martini, a margarita glass. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. It's a paint and sit with some girlfriends that are getting together, so that's going to be fun. Anyway, I uh, thank you for turning in. What's the uh, turning in, tuning in? I am Kim. Looks great. Have a great night. You too, Francesca. Like I said, I super hope you get better, and I'm really dying to meet you because I, you know, I want to talk to you about some things, ideas I got going on, and see if we can get something rocking here. So everybody, have a blessed uh, weekend, and um, I will see you guys next week, and I'll be painting with Danita, and we're doing a little co-paint, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.